All right, short reviews for July 12th. And uh, we're moving into the mid to late July releases here a little bit further. And, uh, these, you know, we're j just another six for this week. And, uh, yeah, I guess we'll just get right to it. Uh, kind of a, another just group of selections that were kind of easy to pick up and talk about uh, nothing too wildly amazing here but uh the first thing i have to talk about is a brutal death metal band out of sacramento california uh which it comes from a uh the kind of a long time uh uh live guitarist from brodekin and that's a very well known brutal death metal band and this style is uh, kind of a classic uh 2000s brutal death metal sound which is still rooted in that suffocation-esque feeling uh, taken to that next level of that new generation back then. And uh, certainly if you are a fan of those steps taken beyond uh, suffocation and cannibal corpse into a disgorge and defeated sanity, you'll, you'll understand what this band is about, what their standard is, and just uh, how that next level of performance is. It's still really entertaining for me. Uh, it's a very high point in death metal. And uh, they're not so much uh, recreating the past, but certainly their taste lies in uh, the sort of 2000s brutal death metal sound, uh, given some updates in terms of just technique and uh, atmosphere and just the general feeling of the music along with a, uh, a sort of a historic um, uh, warfare-focused lyrical theme. So uh, the, the, the short of it, I guess I would say, is that there's a bit of disgorge in the sound. There's also a little bit of sarpanitum. And I, I definitely mean kind of the second, like, uh, 2015 era uh, sarpanitum record, where they uh, the fellow from Mithras had joined uh, and their production had changed drastically. Their sound had changed quite a bit on that second record. This isn't quite as, uh, you know, just over the top with its sound design, but it certainly touches upon that feeling in at least one of these three songs. It's a short EP. It's pretty quick to get through. I think the first song is kind of the, the one to sell the band to you if you've never heard them, uh, but I would recommend going back to their 2015 album, rediscovering that, and uh, I would assume that they're working on a new album at some point because this uh, this these pieces are very well developed and it feels like they're they're ready for something you know and the, the lineup is pretty impressive with you know people, folks from uh, contrarian and malignancy and all these really impressive bands are have shown up uh, into this lineup so it sounds like they're ready for something so check that out if uh, you're into uh, real brutal death metal Conflagrations is the third full length from Rannick, and it's a uh, West Midlands, I think, uh, like like Birmingham, I think, some some somewhere around there, uh, British progressive death metal band, uh, who, so this is one of those things where like I admire what it is, and I think it's very well done. I think it's very well curated and impressive, and 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 uh, very strong. Uh, just quality but it's just not really my type of progressive death metal it leans towards a little bit of gojira and uh Meshuga, where it's just uh there's a rhythmic touch to it which is very much a, a, a style that i've never quite enjoyed from the uh, sort of mid to late 90s uh kind of gave birth to gent and and whatnot um at least the guitar techniques and uh, the way that it frames and phrases everything in a very, uh, I, what I would consider an industrial influenced machine rhythm. And uh, that's not really what this is, but there's uh, definitely that bonking down tune feeling to the rhythm guitars that uh, just, it's not organic enough for me in terms of uh, music that I can sit and listen to uh for hours on end so it didn't really pass that test but everything about this record is a, an improvement upon the last i think the use of keyboards and clean vocals has improved across the board and it's made their sound a lot more dynamic and there's there's more to it than these sort of um kind of accessible uh progressive death metal riffs so worth checking out if you're interested in modern progressive death metal So 
So I'm, I'm not sure what to say about Eternal Rot after three albums. I think Morebound is uh, uh, even more over the top. I think their use of vocal effects for this death doom metal kind of stonerish riff sound is still a little bit related to like Hooded Menace in some distant way. But uh, they develop these kind of swinging stoner doom riffs within a uh, like a like a very like old school sort of. Uh, amateur kind of budget sound which you know it's not an insult it's just like if if you're a fan of like rigor sardonicus or uh even mortician you understand why that extreme is is evocative of a certain early 90s extreme metal kind of bedroom project feeling and i don't think they've escaped that bedroom project feeling into anything that's quite uh like really interesting in terms of songwriting i think the sound design is is very cool and you can tell they really worked at it in the last three albums to sort of find that ideal. But for me, this is, a, it's kind of just iteration at this point. It's not bad. Uh, I don't think, you know, just the, the sort of gimmick has, has worn off for me. Or the, uh, the the sound has sort of worn off for me. And I'm waiting for like, you know, Hooded Menace had riffs, you know. Even Rigor Sardonicus has riffs. So, you know, um, it's not a bad record. Like, it's just that I don't think it does anything all that different than the last two did so a little bit uh, more professional a little bit cleaner sounding in terms of just uh, the the beats lining up and the performances being stronger but uh, the vocals are very over the top and i think maybe that's worth the price of admission for most people <laughs> Unholy Mountain is the debut full length from uh, a Norwegian, I think Rogaland area, Norwegian stoner doom metal band, and one that has a heavy influence from psychedelic doom metal of the early 90s. Uh, of course, Sleep is a, a very big influence on the riff style, and I think you can directly feel the way they sort of slide and uh, slip and slide around the riff where you just feel that influence, and maybe the album title should have made that obvious enough. I think it's a very standard band, uh, but uh, an entertaining one nonetheless. Uh, I found that even though like, I wasn't stunned by this album, I didn't think it was exceptionally above average, but when I sat with it, I enjoyed it. And just literally just enjoying an album uh, that is fairly typical in its doom metal sound is is kind of enough. Like I, uh, I'm enough of a fan of this style to... Uh, hang out with a record like this and just enjoy it. So nothing new, nothing, uh, you know, overly exceptional, but a, a cool start. And, and I like how the vocals are, are consistently a little, little bit more harsh. It sort of speaks to that, um, the, the place where Sleep and Electric Wizard, Wizard uh, merged a little bit in terms of the zeitgeist of psychedelic doom metal in the uh, kind of late 90s, early 2000s. So check that out if that's your kind of thing. Trace the Veins is the debut full length from Green Inferno, and this is a New Jersey based uh, uh, doom metal trio. I think a stoner doom metal or even sludge doom metal w would fit. Uh, so, this record is, uh, I think, mixed or at least mastered by uh, Espen Williams of Monolord, and um, it's recorded in a way that feels very much like a basement tape. And I don't mean that it's kind of gritty or. Um, it's more that it's just very dungeonous. It's very subterranean in sound. It's it's very heavy in that respect. Uh, but they're going for a little bit more of an extreme angle with the vocals and something a little bit more expressive, but kind of uh, uh, everything is, is definitely a low frequency uh, enjoyers kind of thing. So uh, there's kind of a swinging sludge to metal style to the riffs and they kind of uh, move in a way that's... Um, it's entertaining. It's catchy. It's, it's. Uh, it feels like a doom metal once you've sat with it for a while. But it definitely feels like an early '90s sludge metal record when it starts. So, definitely, uh, kind of ping that part of my brain that started out with bands like uh, I Hate God and Grief back in the day, but uh, turns into a little bit more of a traditional doom metal album in a, a very simple manner. The more you listen to it, so not incredibly tuneful, but still memorable enough and uh, i thought it was a cool album like it's definitely like an underground feeling doom metal record and that's 
kind of usually what I'm into, so I enjoyed it. I had a lot of things that I was going to talk about this week. I was probably going to do more than six, uh, but uh, just sticking to what uh, people are more likely to actually check out. I think in human condition, putting out an EP is kind of a, a notable thing for a lot of people who follow the general old school death metal thing and the relation to obituary kind of makes, uh, you know, this band, um, pretty notable with terry butler in the band now panic prayer is i think three new songs uh which are uh definitely what i heard they're just set from the uh most recent sessions from their second album and uh definitely on that tip where there's a little bit of a hardcore uh punk influence to what they're doing it's still a death thrash metal band at heart it's still a an a 80s a florida death metal band uh in their uh intended effect and, uh, you know, as an offshoot of a band that were just kind of ghostwriting a massacre record and decided to do their own thing, I think that they're pretty impressive. And, and I know these guys, you know, they, they're also working in like, uh, Venom Inc. and some other bands that are, um, pretty top notch. They're, they're a pretty good study of, uh, different types of old school, you know, metal in general. So this stuff works. They, they can write a catchy, memorable song. They've got uh, riffs that really fit the style. So it all works for me. I think it's all a bit standard, but uh, above average in terms of songwriting that we get from a lot of old school death metal, which is uh, typically more about style than substance. And this has the right style, but the songwriting feels substantive, even if it's just a couple of songs. And um, uh, otherwise, the EP has a Blue Oyster Cult cover. I, you know, I don't really care about that, uh, especially a Godzilla cover. And um, we get uh, a f like th about four live tracks, which are mostly songs from their most recent full length. And uh, I don't know, I think it speaks to the fact that they're uh, both uh, an effective live band from my experience and uh, the songs carry over in a, a little bit more of a sparse setting. They're, they're pretty good performers who are well-tested. So uh, worth checking out if you're interested in, uh, uh, you know, florida death metal revival and uh people who are, are pretty good at what they do in terms of uh bringing back that feeling and energy uh from old forms of of uh extreme metal so check that out I adopt the same. 